Hello, um, this is Neil. It's, uh, it's Mother's Day today, so I'm just popping out to get some nice coffee. Um, we're still under circuit breaker rules in Singapore. About to enter our sixth week of circuit breaker. Um, and I just watched this fabulous series um, on BBC called Lockdown Diaries. People all over the world sort of sharing their particular experience and little five minute vignettes and it was, uh, it was really beautiful actually, very moving. Um, and it occurred to me that you know, we are living in this uh, very unique moment in history and that there might be some value in preserving that even if it's just the mundane stuff about normal life. So I thought I would start perhaps a little diary starting today. Um, so yeah, we're nearly six weeks in. It's, uh, it's getting pretty dull now. Um, getting real sick of, of consuming stuff, of staring at screens, of uh, just passively taking in music and books and films. It's amazing we have access to all this incredible entertainment, don't get me wrong, but um, at some point you want to actively create. And that's hard too because you're stuck at home with no sort of external inspiration, uh, no connections. I mean, I thrive off that stuff, so. I found it quite hard, but I thought, well, this is this is kind of easy, right? Is uh, I'll just, just talk about what I'm up to. Not really for anybody else, but it'll be interesting for me to look back and, and see how me and my family coped, I guess. I'm not going to edit anything. I'm just going to upload it as it is. So, yeah, it's Sunday morning. Uh, it's about half eight. Uh, I went to bed early um, because, as I say, I can't keep watching TV. So I'm up early. I'm going to cook breakfast for the, the four mothers that reside in my house. I've got my wife, uh, her mother, our helper, and her mother's carer, all living in our house. That's four mothers, so it's become a little bit of a tradition over the last few years for me to cook a full English breakfast for everybody. Um, but we're out of bread. We've got, a, we've got a coffee shop and a little baker's up the road that are open for takeaway. They have to check in using their little QR code and they take your temperature. And uh, yesterday I went to the supermarket for the first time in a, in a while. I don't really do the, the shopping run. I don't like supermarkets, but uh, I had to check in with my ID and check out. And uh, it's great, it's efficient, and it's going to obviously help contact tracing and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's a little worrying, a little surveillance state. I mean, I trust, or I'd like to trust my public servants. In Singapore, I, I think they're almost beyond reproach, but wherever you are in the world, you know, you elect them in, they're your public servants. And we trust Google, we trust Facebook with our stuff all the time. Why not our elected officials? But, you know, it's hard to put the genie back in the bottle and one does have to wonder how they might use these things to, I don't know, allocate benefits. You know, oh, we saw you went to the post office the other day. You can't be that ill. Um, let's take your money off you and things like that. I think that's where it becomes worrying. I don't know if you can put the genie back in the bottle, really. I've had a bit of a political awakening over this period. I wrote about it on Medium. Again, not for anybody particular, just as a way of sorting out my own thoughts. And uh, I feel in the UK like they've lied to us a lot. Some people might be going, well, duh. But I feel like, you know, you've got to put your trust in something. I'm not, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in corporations. Our public servants are the, are the best option we've got. But um, as I said in the blog, as soon as Rishi Sunak you know, revealed that in fact there is a magic money tree. I started to really question everything of the last 10 years in the UK. Not that it's affected me, I'm in Singapore, but I deal with that in the blog as well. I don't feel terribly connected here and, and less so in a, in a crisis. But I won't go over all that now. So what have we got to look forward to today? Well, it's a weekend, um, so the routine kind of goes out the window a bit. We're gonna do, uh, we've gotten into a habit of doing an afternoon movie with Kimmy, try and improve her attention span, get her to sit through a whole film. So we sit down, we close the curtains, we, uh, we put popcorn on and uh, try and make it a bit of an event. Um, we, there's not many places to go out at the moment. I mean, there's, there, there are parks and stuff that you can't park anywhere. You can't put the car anywhere, so everything's shut off and we don't want to get on public transport, obviously. Um, so we were staying in, and of course in the daytime as well, it's. You know, it's like 36 degrees out. I mean, it's half eight now, it's not too bad, but by 10 o'clock, it'll be crazy hot. And we'll remain that way till six or seven in the evening and going outside is just not very pleasant. Normally you're at work, you go to offices or coffee shops or whatever, there's some air con, there's some people. 
But right now, just stepping out into the blazing hot streets on your own is not really a respite from your nice air-conditioned house, so I'm not too into that. But it's not too hard on us here in Singapore, I mean, I've got to say, we're very fortunate to have home help. Uh, we live just above my mother-in-law, so the two flats are actually connected, so we can send Kimmy, uh, my daughter, downstairs for half a day, try and get some work done in the morning, and then um, get her back up in the afternoon for homeschooling. And we obviously have some help at home, which is, which is a huge relief. We've been eating absolutely brilliantly. Well, I haven't. I've been on antibiotics for three weeks. I uh, I've came off them yesterday, so I've not even had sort of meals and, and, and cocktails or drinks to look forward to. <laughs> I've been eating rounds of toast and cereal. Um, I'm making seed lip and tonics in the evening, but tonight I'm going to make a proper cocktail. That was going to be my lockdown skill that I was going to learn, was how to make a proper cocktail. So I got all the gear and then I got ill. Not with coronavirus, with uh, some sort of stomach bug, but it seems to have gone now. So. Um, so that's what I've got to look forward to tonight, is I get to actually have a cocktail. I'm probably going to make a whiskey sour, I think. Um, but that's about it. I spoke to mum and dad yesterday. Haven't really got much more to say to them. That's the problem at the moment. It's kind of, I, I'm dying for some conversation, but every conversation's kind of the same. It's, uh, how you doing? How you coping? Oh, well, it can't last forever. You know, this too much shall pass, or whatever they say. So, uh, so yeah, conversations are sort of drying up as people get pretty sick of it. The novelty wears off. Not really looking forward to the week ahead. I've got a little bit of work. Um, a little bit of consulting work, but you know, all the fun's kind of stripped out of it, you know, everything that I that I enjoy about my work, the travel, the meeting people, the, uh, the sort of performance aspect of the workshops I do, and the sort of problem solving around a table, all of that's stripped out and reduced down to you know, PowerPoint slides and scripts, which is really the least fun of it. I think at times, you know, when I was at school, it was all about getting a job in an office, you know, becoming some sort of executive preparing for the knowledge economy and all that and uh you know now i'm starting to wonder if that old advice that people used to give you in the 70s and 80s about getting a trade wasn't the better idea i mean who wants to spend their entire life sat behind a behind a desk waiting for emails to respond to i think that's what almost all jobs are now aren't they just sitting behind a desk waiting for an email to respond to but uh maybe being a carpenter or an electrician might have been a better idea they certainly earn plenty of money but anyway, that's not what I do, so uh, I'm going to try and... I'm, gl I'm grateful to have a bit of work. Um, and I'll do my best, as I always do, but... Uh, well, like I say, I've been thinking a lot politically about how this changes my feelings about politics, and I've been trying to sort that out in writing, and also about the nature of work and what its value is. Obviously, we're finding that the people we value financially in society probably aren't the most useful people. And those that we don't value highly in the financial sense probably are the most useful people so that's interesting but also just you know when you sit at home doing this work so that you can build your hours or fill your time you start to wonder you know how i just feel like i'm pushing numbers and words around on a page you know I don't, i'm not quite sure what the value of it is but i don't know maybe that's just a bit of uh, a bit of lockdown induced uh you know downer I don't want to say depression, it's not depression, but you know, you have good days and bad days, don't you? So maybe that's me just sort of questioning things on a bad day. But today's going to be a good day. We're going to have a nice big fried breakfast. Uh, we're going to watch a movie this afternoon with popcorn. We're going to have a cocktail tonight, so I'll make the most of it. And uh, I'm at my coffee shop, so I'm going to go and get something to drink now. Okay, till tomorrow, I guess.